I want to ask, if you would, that you go to 1 Thessalonians as we open up today. 1 Thessalonians, and I'm going to see if I can find it right quick. <coughs> Pardon me. I had coffee go down the wrong way. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And I want to take a look at chapter 5. Chapter 5 of 1 Thessalonians. And it says this, Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. That's absolutely important, isn't it? Look what he says. Concerning the times and the seasons. Now he's not talking about winter, spring, fall. He's not talking about the four seasons. And he's not just talking about what time of day it is. He's talking about times and seasons. And we are in the end time. Amen? I won't even say plural. This is not times. We are in the end time. We are in a place where the time and the season has come to a place where we are about to see the fullness of the Lord. We're going to see as they, they, they say that this is the dispensation of grace. This is the time... Lord, where God is calling by His Spirit, through His people, by His gospel, all men to repent, to come to Him. But I want you to know something here. Paul told the Thessalonians <clears throat> that uh, concerning the times and the seasons, you don't have need that I say anything to you. In other words, you're already informed about this. And I want you to know something. We need to be informed about what is happening. And we are in a place now, and I want to encourage everyone that's joining us this morning, we welcome you to Rivers of the Kingdom, but I want to encourage you that you must know the times and the seasons. Because if you don't know what God is doing and what season it is, you won't walk with Him according to what you're supposed to do. Let me ask you this. If it's summer, what is the weather normally? It's hot. So what kind of attire should you wear? A sweater? A jacket all the time? Zoe said amen. What am I, what's my point? My point is, is that you have to know what to wear based on the season you're in. There is a time, the Bible says, for war. And there is a time for peace. There is a time for rejoicing and there is a time for mourning. To everything there is a... Come on, come on... Come on, some of you from the 60s. <laughs> you remember the song, To everything turn, turn, turn. There is a season. Hallelujah. Come on, and later we'll sing up that we're going up to the Spirit in the sky. Hallelujah. You can laugh at it. It's okay. It's okay. It is all right to express your emotions. Hallelujah. So my point today is you have got to be in alignment with what God is doing in the season that he is in. And the season and the time is extremely important. In this nation, we are in a season of election, are we not? And undoubtedly, the season of election, what does that mean? We're going to be covered with signs. You're going to get all kinds of commercials you did not ask for. Right? You're going to hear the same thing over and over. There's going to be mud slinging. There's going to be accusations. There's going to be dirt. There's going to be all kinds of everything. There's going to be everything but probably truth and policy talked about. It's part of the system, right? And the system is not God's system necessarily. It's an election. It's a worldly system. But it's a season. But we need to know what God's season is on top of that. In the midst of what the worldly season is, we must know what the season of God is. Let me give it to you this way. Jesus in Matthew, he tells them, when you see the abomination of desolation in the temple, what did he tell them to do? Does anybody remember? We didn't teach that one in Sunday school. Run to the hills. Run to the hills. That's right. He said, don't even go downstairs. Jump off the roof 
and get out of town. Leave. Why? Because that is going to be a season of escape. You must escape something. There is a time and a season. Somebody say it with me. Time, time. and season. season. Hallelujah. So God wants us to know the time and the season. And I want to share with you this morning, as we open up, before we go into worship, we're going to take a moment to pray for our nation. This nation is not just in an election cycle. This nation is in a restoration cycle. We are in a season of preparation for an awakening. And everything that has happened under the sun will continue to take place and happen until the Lord's will is done. Amen? Amen. In other words, history repeats itself. You can go back and you can look at the mighty moves of God in the things that were happening before those great outpourings of the Holy Spirit, before the first and second great awakening, before Azusa Street, before the outpouring of the, of, of the, 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 the uh, word of healing, all of these things, before the charismatic movement, before Martin Luther, come on. All of these things, you can go back to them and you can see the season that they were in and you can take a look and see we are in the same cycle of restoration. It seems like everything in winter sometimes completely shuts down and dies, doesn't it? There's no flowers. There may be no leaves. It is cold. It is dank. It is dreary. We are shut up. All of these things taking place. And what is the point? that I'm trying to make. There's always a spring, is there not? God promises in Genesis that there will always be, as long as the earth remains, there will be springtime and harvest. Praise the Lord. So my point, please hear me this morning. Please hear me, those of you that are joining us through the internet this morning. I want you to hear me. We are in a season of restoration that is going to bring us into a season of revival. Come on. I've been blessed to be a part of some great moves of God, but I'm telling you what's about to happen. Where sin does abound, grace does abound even more. Now, why are you talking about this at the very beginning of service and all we should be doing is singing and clapping with something on TV? Because if we are ignorant of the season, we will not be prepared spiritually to walk with God in that season. And we could actually find ourselves opposing God. Come on, if God says, why are you with Saul? And we're over here with Saul, but God has a David waiting for somebody to go and anoint him. If we're out of step with God, we will miss the move of God. All right, so somebody's now starting to hear. Hallelujah. So you have to make sure that you are properly prepared and wearing. I'm telling you, the only channel on some TVs are the weather channel. Hallelujah. No one has to point. <laughs> What is my point about the weather channel? To know what the weather is outside. Well, when we were growing up on the farm, the weather was extremely important. Today it is raining. Can I go work outside? Can I go plow outside? Can I go outside and get that tractor stuck in the field? No, I have to know what to do based on the weather. I have to know the season I'm in. Do I wear a sweater? Some of you wear cardigans. Do it all the time. All the time. <laughs> do, do I wear shorts? How do I dress? Paul said, now concerning the times and the seasons, brother, you, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you. Why was that? Because they already knew by the Spirit of God what to wear. And how to walk with God in season and out of season. They knew when to speak and when not to speak. They knew when to stop and when to run. Why? Because the same spirit that is in you, 
that is in them, that is in me, that was in Paul, the Holy Spirit. He is the Spirit of the Lord. And where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. And God wants us to be at liberty no matter what the season is because we're walking with Him in that season. That's how I know whether I abound or I'm abased. Whether I'm in prison or I'm in the greatest revival that has ever been seen in, 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 in Asia. I know I'm okay because I'm with God, walking with Him in the season Outwardly, inwardly, I'm with him. Amen. Well, I lost my job. It could be the season of transition for you. But if you panic and you fall apart, come on. When God delivered me, hallelujah, which after 18 years of sentence, I feel like Jean Valjean, hallelujah. Nobody knows that in here. One, two people, okay. Uh, okay, uh, three. After God delivered me from where I was working for so long, the Lord spoke to me a month and a half before. Did he not? And he said, You're, and it was not a good season. It was horrible. It was a holiday season at retail. And the holiday season at retail was not letting up. It did not look like there was any hope. I was out there breaking rocks in prison labor camp. That's what it felt like. And I am not trying in any way to, to make fun of those that literally in the body of Christ are having to face that today. I repent of that. My point is, because the spirit in me, I knew the season I was in. And so I was rejoicing even in the midst of a difficult time. And even in the midst of them saying, well, you know what, we, we, we're going to move you. Or you can leave. I knew what to do. I knew what to do because the Spirit of the Lord in me. So Paul is saying, Now concerning the times and the seasons, brothers, you have no need to have anything written to you because the Spirit in you has already prepared. <coughs> now I want to say this. And then I'm going to ask a couple of you to come up and pray for this nation. All of this is because we're in a season in the nation that God has placed us as born again Christians of tremendous, what seems to be upheaval, stress, division, a lot of tempestuous activity happening. It seems like it's just a storm out there. But this is a season of tremendous transition it is a season of renewal and release not only to the body of christ but when the body of christ is released from what we have allowed to bind us up it will cause a release of the spirit of god where he has placed us hear me now Amen. i want you to understand something this is a awesome wonderful time to be an american are you with me? We are at a place where God has positioned us as salt and light to bear witness to his resurrection, restoring power in a nation. Come on. We, we have a choice. We have a choice. We can either allow the world to go its own way or we can stand up and say, no, it will not. Not on my watch. I know the time and the season. And this is not a normal election. This is not an election that has to do with who's going to have political power. This is an election that will determine whether or not we are in alignment as a nation with the return of the king. That's how important this election is. Why? Because the season of the return of the Lord is where we're transitioning into. We are coming into the place that when my daughter, if the Lord Terry reaches my age, it's going to be in the millennium. Do you understand? We're at a place, and I'm going to talk in depth about this in just a little bit, where it is a time to be sober 
Because if we have on our party hats and we think it's birthday season and it's all about the gifts that God has given me and God has given you all gifts. And He's a good God and He makes you succeed. He makes you prosper. He makes you healed. He makes you delivered. He makes you walk in peace. All these wonderful things. But if we are wearing our, 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 our party clothes and not our armor in the season of war then we will miss the transition and not be aligned with the one who has come with a sword in his mouth. Hallelujah. Amen. So we can talk about our own personal policy views or our own baggage, whether or not we have issues with, with our, uh, uh, this party or that party or this personality or that personality. We can even talk about whether we like or dislike abortion. Which, by the way, if you like it, I need to cast some devils out of you. You need to get saved. Amen. Is this the issue or that? None of that matters. The Christian knows when you compare it to following Christ, none of it matters. And lastly, I want to say this, and then I'm going to ask Donette, and I'm going to ask Brandy, and I'm going to ask my wife to come up like we did last week, and we're going to take a moment to pray. None of it matters if we're not in alignment with God for that season. Are we together this morning? Yeah. In one heart and one mind, what happens is, is that God sounds a trumpet to call us to war. And there are those of us that there are going to be some virgins. They're virgins but they have no oil because they don't know the time and the season. This is a day where we must know not our purpose, but our assignment. He, he has the purpose. We have the assignment. An assignment is specific, is it not? The purpose of going to class might be to be able to pass and to get an education. The assignment is what's in front of me for the day. We are in a moment where if we don't walk with him daily, we will miss his purpose for our life. We need to know our assignment. Say that word with me. Assignment. Whew. Hallelujah. And so this morning, I want to open up. All of this was just simply to open up in prayer, to bring us to a place of gravity where we must pray for this nation. We must pray for her leaders, pray for her judges. Tomorrow, they're going to confirm in Jesus' name, Amy Barrett. She has been prophesied years ago that she would become a Supreme Court not, I'm telling you, I can take you back. She would be the Supreme Court person that actually tipped the scale to, to, to rid us of Roe versus Wade. Amen. Amen. But God spoke to me yesterday, and I'm telling you, breaking my heart, He said, Son, if it was illegal by penalty of death, it still wouldn't change the hearts of those that have allowed 65 million children to be slaughtered in their nation. We don't need just the laws changed. We need hearts changed. It isn't that they're fighting for the right to abort a child. They're fighting for a right to sin. That's the fight. Because their heart desires to be free to sin more than it desires to take care of a life. God, we must have an awakening in this nation. If we won the White House, the Senate, and the Congress, if every judge was pro-life, if the books and the laws were perfect and aligned 100% with God's rules, it would not change one single heart. Because the gospel is the power of God unto salvation. Not the statutes, not the legal, not the, the judges, not the president. It is the gospel. 
And though we have on our armor and we're out fighting in an election by the Spirit of God, we must still understand it's not about the country, it's about the people in the country. God is after the hearts of men, women, and children. He is after souls above all things to be born again and to come into a family with Him. Whether America lives or dies, Jesus is still Lord. And we must stand. Now, I will fight. According to the Spirit, I will lose friends. According to the Spirit, I will let my body be broken and bruised. God willing, according to the Spirit. But it means nothing if it doesn't win somebody else to Christ. And so today we're going to dive into this a little bit deeper because God has not stopped me. He said, son, I need this on you as you walk into this next season. You need to wear this. You need to be clothed with Christ. You need to have on humility and gentleness and patience, even with those that persecute you. What happens when you're called a racist and a homophobe and a xenophobe, Islamophobe? Come on. What happens when the brother down the street from the church down the street says, oh, you're just one of those cults, those tongue talkers, those snake handlers? How am I to react with a post? With the Word, with the love of God, with mercy. Jonah cried out, God, I don't want to do it. And he ran because there was anger in his heart. Elijah said, kill me, I'm the only one left. And cried under a leaf. Was it a juniper tree or something like that? Jesus said, not my will, but your will be done. Close your eyes with me and say, Lord, show me what season we're in. Hallelujah. Oh man, I have so much to say. I pray, God, that it would not just be me running my mouth. I'm going to ask, ladies, if you would come up and we're going to pray this morning and then we're going to go into worship. And we're going to hear the word of the Lord today. In Jesus' name. Go ahead and grab that. And I'm going to ask that they take turns. And you know what? I trust each and every one of them. They're going to flow with the Holy Spirit. One will pray for something and one will, and God will put an end on it. But I want to pray. And I want to encourage those of you that are watching us and, and participating. We're going to be going into a fast Starting next Sunday. Next Sunday, we're going to take communion again. The Spirit of the Lord told me to do that this morning on the way here. We're going to take communion again and we're going to fast starting on the 1st of November, the 2nd and the 3rd. We're fasting not just so that our candidate would win. We are fasting that our God would open the hearts of this nation and the nations of the world. And that we would see the move and the awakening of God in the hearts and minds of the people. We must see a move of God that changes the masses, that puts the ship back in order. Otherwise, we will not finish the work that God's called us to do. The church has been infected. We have allowed the world and disease into our midst. And God is going to break these evil spirits so that we can serve Him and we can run the race and fulfill the purpose of Christ through our individual assignments. 
And so I'm going to ask each one of you ladies, as the Lord leads, you just come up. It might be praying for the president. It might be praying for the nation. It might be praying for revival, whatever it is. But I'm going to ask them to pray. And I'm going to ask you to, if you've ever come into a season of prayer, now is the time. We cannot take anything for granted. We do not pray in fear. We pray believing that our God hears and answers His, His people. In Jesus' name. Father, we just give you praise. Let's pray in the Spirit as they pray. Twenty-one twenty-five. In those days, there was no king in Israel. Everyone did what was right in his own eyes. Father, oh Jesus, they had no king. They had no king. And we as your people today, many of us have fallen and say that we have no king because we do things in our own eyes. The things that we think are right, the things that we feel are right, the things that we desire, the things that we want instead of what you want. So, Father, I pray right now that your children, that this nation, that all nations watching right now in the name of Jesus will claim you as king. You, King Jesus that we will stand and claim you, that we will no longer, no longer do what we think is right, that we will no longer do what we feel is right. Oh, Jesus, it is not about our feelings. It is not about what we want. It is all about what you want and your ways and your desires. It's not about us. It's not about us. It's about you. You over this nation, you over this world, for you are king of it all. That we would stand and claim you as king today. In this season, in this time, we choose you. You say, choose you this day who you will serve. So I, if no one else, say, I choose you, Jesus. I choose you, Jesus, because you are the only way. You are the light, you are the way, you are the direction, you are the path, you are our life source. Father, that your people, that all the peoples of all the nations would claim you and say, no more, no more our ways, no more our feelings, no more the way we think, the way we feel, the way we see anything. We will live and we will walk by what you say. We will wear the armor for this season. We will wear the clothes for this season. For your season. No matter what that season is. We will listen to you and we will stand and we will say. You are king. No matter what else. Father I claim this right now over the nations. Over every nation you are king. You are king. You are king. You are king. You are king, you are king, King Jesus. And we love you and we praise you. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, Father God, we lift this nation to you, Lord, and we ask you to forgive us. We ask you especially to forgive your body, Lord. As we sat back in and just enjoyed being in your presence and your blessing, Lord, as the world just was going to hell, Lord, we ask you to forgive us, Father God. Oh, thank you, Jesus, Lord. And as, as, the, as the apostles were in the Garden of Gethsemane with, with Jesus before his crucifixion, Lord, they fell asleep, Lord. We've been asleep. We've been asleep at a crucial time, Lord. We ask you to wake us up. Wake us up, Lord. Help us to see what you want, what your will is, Lord. We bind every spirit of deception. We bind every spirit of division. We bind every spirit that comes against your body and in this nation and the world. Father God, let the, let the scales fall from their eyes, O oh Lord. Let them hear your voice. 
You said that your children hear your voice and another they will not follow. Lord, we ask you to unplug their ears. Lord, let them hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the body. Oh, we break it. We break every work of the enemy, every contract that Satan has over the church and over our children, oh God. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. Oh, Father. Oh, Father, we ask for mercy on this nation, Lord. Mercy. Mercy, Lord. Oh, help us to walk in your way and your will, oh God. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Jesus. Give us strength to do your will, Lord. Not to walk to the left or to the right, oh God. But to walk on that narrow path, Lord. We know it's not an easy path, but help us, Father God. To stay true to what you have for your people, oh God. Oh, Lord, I just ask that the stone would be removed from hearts, Father God. Remove the this, this stone, pe Lord, from people's hearts, Father, that they would receive the word with gladness, Father God, that we could reason with one another, Lord, that they would hear your word, Father God. I see those crying, offense, offense, because they have the stones in their heart, Father, when really it's the Spirit bringing conviction and correction, Father God. I just pray, Lord, that the stones would be removed, Lord, that we can plow that ground with your word, Father God, that the seeds would be sown, Lord, and that they would come up fruitful and strong and branch out and share the word with others, Father God, that more may come to know you, Lord, that we would hear and be open to your spirit in this season, Father God, that we would join together in unity, Father, and not division, for the word's sake, Lord, for your sake, Father, in the name of Jesus. Father, we praise you today, Lord God. We praise you and we seek your face, Lord. We, your people, which are called by your name, Lord God, we repent, Lord God. We ask you to forgive us of our sins, Lord, individually and collectively, Father God. And Father, as we come before you, Lord God, representing your body in this nation, we beseech you on behalf of this nation, Lord God, that you would give us righteous judges as at the first, Father God, that in the name of Jesus of Nazareth, your will would reign, Lord God, even from the Supreme Court, Father God. Father, you said in your word that, Lord God, you would give us righteous judges as at the first. We ask for righteous judges, O God. We ask that, Father God, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you would confirm these judges and that these judges, Lord God, that are after your own heart, those that will do righteously and justly, Lord God, and they will rule according to your spirit and the law of the land that was based on your word, Father God, and your word alone, Lord God. We pray that, Father, in Jesus' name, that, Lord God, you would see by your hand that the doors would be open to them. And Father God, we pray over all of those that are in the Supreme Court and we break the spirit of the age off of them. We break the spirit of the beltway off of them. We break the spirit of blindness off of them. We break the spirit of Moloch and Baal off of them in the name of Jesus of Nazareth. We break that spirit in Jesus' name that would try to control them. We break and command everything that's not of God. Loose them in the name of Jesus. Be thou removed from our Supreme Court and every court under it down to the local magistrate. We pray for them that they would have the spirit of the fear of God back in the judges seats Lord God and we give you praise Father God we praise you Lord God for the legislative branch in this nation we praise you for the Congress and the Senate Father God that Lord you would raise up those that have a heart after you to do righteous to do justly that they would cause the word of God to be able to be prosperous and easily received in this nation that they would not hinder your word that they would allow your people prosperity and peace to hear and to obey the word and the will of the living God that unrighteous laws and taxes would be broken off of the backs of your people that father God we pray now for the presidency we pray for the White House oh God father we pray for the man that you've chosen we pray for the one that you've appointed and anointed father God that that man would not fail Lord God 
that his heart would be serviced and, and completely obedient to you. And that, Father, the wickedness and evilness, Lord God, even in his own heart would be exposed and repented of. That, Father, in the name of Jesus, we pray for the vice president. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name. We pray for the leaders of this nation right now. We ask you, Lord God, that you would surround them, that no weapon formed against them would prosper, that nothing would by any means hurt them. We bind and we break every assassination attempt in Jesus' name. We command the mouths of the lions to be shut in the name of Jesus. We command the destruction of the prophets of Baal in the name of Jesus. And we thank you, Father God, for granting, Lord God, a return and a restoration in this nation, not to the status quo, not to a place where your people are lulled back to sleep, but, Father God, a place where the gospel is free and exalted and honored again from our government. They will know that Jesus is Lord and they will bow the knee before Him and no other. They will not serve manna. They will not serve Baal. They will not serve Moloch. They will not serve Jezebel. They will serve serve Christ and let your pastors in this nation awaken oh God let your pastors turn again to the flock not to feed themselves but to feed the sheep to feed the real word of God not to try to build numbers not to try to build buildings not to try to fly around the world but God let the gospel fly Lord let the gospel be heard let the name of Jesus be made famous stretch forth your hand to do signs wonders and miracles in the name of your holy child Jesus demonstrate yourself Holy Spirit Pour out upon all flesh. Make our sons and daughters to prophesy. Have your way again in your church. Break this yoke off our neck. Cause our identity to be found in Christ alone. And not in the color of our skin. Or our ancestors. Or our traditions. Or our denominations. In Christ alone. We place our trust. We find our glory in the power of the cross. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. In every victory, let it be said of me that you are my place of hope, my place of strength in Christ alone. Lord, we have been called to pray in this house. We've been called to fast in this house. And we thank you, Lord God, that in this season we will be prepared in this house. And I ask you to stretch the influence of every person here and every person watching. That they would be able to boldly stand up and not just support a candidate or a position, but to support life. And to support the destruction of the the altars of Baal in this land. This is a season of war. And we are prepared for victory is our king. And victory has never lost a battle. Thank you Lord. Thank you Lord. I see in my spirit that God is raising up in this last day and hour. Many church hills that are going to know how to handle the move and the power and the fire of God. They're going to know what's on the horizon and they will build up the military force and the might in the body of Christ. Preparing not by by bullets and, and bombs, but by the word and by the spirit, the people of God, that the people of God are prepared for whatever persecution, for whatever division the enemy tries to bring into the true, ha- the, the true camp of God. He is not going to be able to harm your neighbor because you are going to stand up and fight for your neighbor. He is not going to be able to break your children because your children are under the hedge and the protection of the Lord God Almighty. 
This is a day and an hour where the outpouring of the Holy Spirit will sweep around the world and it will not be a call of, 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 of just blessing and, 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 and sweetness. This is a, a lion that will roar from the tribe of Judah and there will be a warring spirit not against flesh and blood, not against those that oppose us, but against the spirits behind them and we will cause the gates of hell not to prevail against the church through the name of Jesus somebody say his name Jesus say it like you command the gate to open in front of you Jesus say it like you command the mountain to move Jesus you talk to that spirit behind your your ch child's addiction. You speak to that spirit behind the, 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 the rape of these children. You speak to that spirit over abortion. You command that which would blind the eyes of our brothers and sisters. In the name of Jesus, be thou removed and be cast into the sea. Greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. He is our God. If God be for us, who, who can be against us? Oh, I want to encourage you this morning. In all of this time where we've been shut up and we've been shut down and we've been under this COVID and we're wearing masks and we're social distancing, if you've not repented and turned your heart to Christ and let go of your past assumptions of who God was and began to meet Him for who He really is, I encourage you this morning. This is the day of salvation. This is the year of the return of the Lord. This is when we focus on His return and He alone has absolute sovereignty in our hearts. I am an American and as long as I'm here, I believe that by the power of God, America will not fail. But before I'm an American, I'm a Christian and I serve a king and He is eternal and His kingdom shall never fall. And I call the nation that I have been placed in and the nations of the world repent and turn back to God and serve Him with trembling. Hallelujah. For His return is going to be unlike anything we've ever imagined or written in a book. And the things that we're about to see come on this earth, it's going to be how. How can there be so much light in the land of Goshen when there's so much darkness in Egypt? But we're going to see it happen, my friends. We're going to see it happen, family of God. There, there's going to be an outpouring of the Holy Spirit where children will lead into the presence of God with abandon and the fire of God will be contained no longer in the four walls of a building. Somebody say amen. amen. And we tremble before our God because He alone can save us. It's not because of an election or a vote or a virus. It's because of sin in our hearts. It's because of sin that we are destroyed. Lack of knowledge of His goodness. And so this morning I want to I want to pray that I would walk with God. I ask, Father, that I would do what You want to have done to, in the remainder of this time together. That those that are gathered and those that are watching and Feeling, I pray, the same anointing that's in this house. And you all feel what I feel in this place. Amen. The same anointing would be there with them as they are worshiping, as their hearts are turned. I want to call each and every one of us. We're going to be fasting next Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday. The first, the second, and the third. We're fasting for ourselves, our families, our nation. 
and for the body of Christ. We are believing God for a move of the Spirit, not only a win in the election, but a win in the ballot box of the heart of this nation. That we would choose God. Choose you this day. That we would choose God. I sincerely believe that judgment is happening in the house of God. And it is a merciful judgment. But pretty soon, it's about to get unhinged. I'm thinking about the, the man who was there with a withered hand. The man with the withered hand. You know the story? Jesus took the scroll and He opened it to Isaiah and He read and He said, The Spirit of the Lord is upon Me. And then He finished and He said, This day... This scripture is fulfilled in your hearing, in your sight. And a man with a withered hand, with an unclean spirit. Sorry, it's not the withered hand, it's the unclean spirit. Cried out in the synagogue. Y'all know what I'm talking about? I'm not going there, I wasn't prepared to go there, but the spirit of the Lord is prompting me. When that man cried out, do you think it was a visitor? Do you think it was maybe somebody that was a, a, a Roman and they just decided, I'm going to go visit the Jewish synagogue that day? A sinner that was going to come and sit amongst the righteous? No. There was that day a spirit in a man and no one knew it until it was contested by a spirit in another man. Amen. Amen. Are you with me? Yeah. When the Spirit of the Lord in Jesus of Nazareth came into the place, a spirit of the enemy in a man in a synagogue. Come on was contested and cried out. What have you to do with me? You got it, Jack? We're going to need to go there. You got it? Well, let's go to Luke 4. That's where it's at. Luke 4. Hallelujah. And you keep reading down. Verse 16. The Isaiah scroll handed to him. He rolled up the scroll. He gave it back. And then you come all the way down. He goes to Capernaum. The city of Galilee. He's going in and out of synagogues at this time, right? He's in and out of churches at this time. Are we together? And now here it is at verse 33. Thank you, Jack. Let's go to 31. And he went down to Capernaum, the city of Galilee. This is amazing. Barb and I, we were able, able to drive past it. We, we didn't get to stop there. And he was teaching them on the Sabbath, on a Sunday. Well, that was a Saturday to them. But I'm just alluding to this was in a church on a holy day. And he was teaching them, and they were astonished at his teaching, for the word, for his word possessed authority. Somebody say authority. authority. And in the synagogue, there was a man who had the spirit of an unclean demon. And he cried out with a loud voice, Ha! What have you to do with us, Jesus of Nazareth? Have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. And Jesus rebuked him and said, Be silent. Come out of him. 
And when the demon had thrown him down in their midst, he came out of him, having done him no harm, and they were all amazed, and they said to one another, What is this word? Somebody say word. word. For with authority, say authority, authority, and power, he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. And reports about him went to every place. Oh, the news caught it and ran with it. Why are we here, brother? Well, okay. In church, on Sunday morning, Sunday after Sunday, the spirits of unclean demons sit there. In people that want to be there. It didn't say his friends drug him in there, spitting and screaming. It didn't say that he was a visitor. It said a man in the synagogue. He had a membership. Come on. Amen. And you couldn't just be in the synagogue because those in the synagogue leadership made sure that if you were going to be in the synagogue, you had to follow the rituals. And the ritual said you've got to do certain things and have certain things the way that they're supposed to be so that you can be accepted in our group. But in the midst of the group that was the group of God, there was an unclean spirit lying dormant. And until somebody with power and authority came and taught with power and authority, there was no challenge to that spirit and none of them knew that there was somebody with an unclean spirit. <laughs> you know, God always demonstrates what He teaches. Look at your neighbor. Say, is it you? Don't look at your neighbor. <laughs> so listen, this is where I want to go with this. I was at a meeting with a man who his entire ministry really does focus around casting out devils. And I'm going to tell you the place was filled with spirit-filled, tongue-talking Christians. How do I know? When we began to worship God, they all began to speak in tongues. And now I'm, I'm not the, the smartest tack. I'm not the sharpest tool. Whatever analogy you want to use. But I will tell you something. I knew they weren't praying in demonic tongues. They were praying in the Holy Spirit. And the Spirit of the Lord was strong in the place. And when that man took authority in Jesus' name and commanded the spirits to come out, at least half of that place erupted with demonic manifestation. Pastor's kids got delivered that night. Come on. Oh, whew. Can I just take a side note for a second? The most powerful thing. I mean, there were people in his face spitting and screaming at him. And he didn't even flinch. And there were people that were getting delivered that had to be held when he, when he came to them to deliver in Jesus' name. But the most powerful thing, he set aside half of those people to get to two kids. And both of them had no idea that the devil had such control of their life, but they were both fornicating with each other in one of the pastor's son in the church. And they confessed Christ, repented with tears, with such a loving move of God in the midst of, I mean, literally people barking like dogs. They got set free. With power and authority... The devil in this man was confronted to the point of, oh, Are you coming to destroy me? I submit to you that there are people that fill our churches and even our pulpits that need someone with true power and authority to walk up in their lives and set them free from something that has laid dormant that they never knew was there. My wife and I, we have a pastor friend and I'm telling you, he posted that he was against uh, abortion and he finally took a stand. 
And all of a sudden, wow, these beautiful, wonderful, shall we gather at the river Christians jumped all over him. When you stand up in confidence in Christ and power and authority comes into your life, it will cause things that are in others to rise up and be threatened by you. Why did they crucify Jesus? They were afraid of the Romans. They weren't afraid of the Romans. That was their excuse. That was their fake news. I learned this from my wife. They crucified Him because He had power and exposed them that they did not. Nicodemus in John 3 came to Jesus and said, We know, Rabbi, that no one does what you do except God be with Him. What were they really afraid of? Caiaphas, you have no power. The dividing line in the body of Christ is about to become based on the Holy Ghost. And I'm not talking about tongues and not tongues. I'm talking about power and no power. 2 Timothy chapter 3, please. Whew. Somebody say power. Power. And authority. And authority. Hallelujah. When we come and challenge the spirit that's in them, it is not flesh and blood, Ephesians 6 and 12. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. It's wickedness. It's the spirits of the age. It is the darkness. It is the unclean spirits that hide. They hide behind wounds that were caused that were never healed. They hide behind ancestral Curses, demonic strongholds of thought. Remember what I said about the little girl when I was a little boy and I wrote a report on Halloween and I found out Halloween was not a good thing to, to, to celebrate? She got all mad and defensive. Stood up on the bus. My mama said. Come on. Reminds me of a young man in Haiti. He said, I want Jesus. He's trembling under the power of God. He's crying and weeping. He said, I want Jesus, but I have to go ask my parents first. If I have to hear one more person get upset because they've watched what YouTube puts out there, about preachers standing in faith against coronavirus? You see that preacher do that thing? All I want to do is just say, yeah, come here and let me blow on you too. They make fun of us. Why? Because there's plenty of word, but there is no power. We gather in a synagogue steeped with demonic oppression. Because we haven't really spent time with the one. And we might know the word, I'm telling you, but I, I'm, I'm, I'm so far short of where the power and the glory of God should be. When that man in that hotel room took authority in Jesus' name and the place erupted in demonic, it was amazing. And like a surgeon, he found the ones that God really wanted to deliver and the ones that were just showing off but they didn't want to be free. I saw him do it. And then he, he had some folks with him. He said, now, if they want freedom, you just you pray for them. There is a man named Jesus in whom all power and authority exists. Amen. The reason they beheaded John the Baptist is he, he confronted them with righteousness. He said, that's not right. And they took his head.
Did Jesus come to bring peace? Or a sword? What season are we in? Are we in a season of peace? Or a sword? Now folks, listen, I want to tell you something. There is a season of peace that God wants. But it is not today. Today is not a time of peace. It is a time of war. And the war is not against the person in the seat. It's the thing that's seated in the person. To bring them to a place of deliverance. To confront them with power and authority. It's 12. Glory to God. Yes, ma'am. I learned... My wife said, keep going. Happy wife, happy life. Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let me get to Timothy. I had it in here. I was going someplace else and the Holy Spirit said, let me drive. Yes, sir, you may. Second Timothy 3. You know what? Let's say it in the Amplified to this morning. Can I do that? I got it here somewhere. Thank you, Jesus. Are you there this morning? Amen. Say power. power. Authority. Authority. Whew, yes, sir. Hallelujah. Proud of you, Barrett. Very proud of you, young man. Verse 1. I'm reading from the Amplified. It says, But understand this, that in the last days, dangerous times of great stress and trouble will come. Difficult days that will be hard to bear. Why? For people will be lovers of self. Narcissistic. What about me? All about me. How does this affect me? This is my truth. This is my life. It's my choice. Amen. Amen. Me, my, mo, mu. For people will be lovers of self, narcissistic, self-focused, lovers of money, impelled by greed. Man, I'm telling you, watch where you drop your laptop off. They will be boastful, arrogant, revilers, disobedient to parents. I'm going to say that again when all my kids get here. Disobedient to parents. Ungrateful. Unholy. And profane. They will be unloving, devoid of natural human affection. Devoid of natural human affection. I don't understand how the issue can't be the murder of babies. Have you no natural human affection? Even animals take care of their children. They will be calloused, having their conscience seared. They will be inhumane, irreconcilable. Folks, I'm telling you, you wait till November 4th. There's going to be some folks unreconcilable. Malicious gossips. Devoid of self-control. Intemperate, immoral, brutal, haters of God. Traitors. Reckless. Conceited. Lovers of sensual pleasure rather than lovers of God. Now you read all of that and we just, oh man, that's the heathen out there. Those are the people out there. I'm telling you what, that's exactly what the world's like. Boy, look at the, the log in their eye. I, I had a little speck. Truth is, is that is a lot of what we deal with in the body of Christ. And if you don't believe that that's who he's talking about. Let's go one more verse. Verse 
five. Jack, I thought he was talking about sinners. I thought he was talking about the unbeliever, the heathen. He must be talking about the heathens. Holding to a form of outward godliness, religion, although they have denied its power. Somebody say dunamis. The word power here is the same word power that Jesus used when He said, You shall receive power not many days from now. When the Spirit of the Lord fell upon them in the upper room, the 120, and they spilled out into the streets, the power of God convicted them through Peter's first sermon. It's the power of God and the salvation that they will hate. They don't care if you pray. Don't pray in the name of the power. Come on. Amen. I don't care if you quote scripture. Just don't quote it with any power. But look, these are not the sinners, the unbelievers or the heathen. These are those that have an outward appearance of religion, but they deny its power, for their conduct nullifies their claim of faith. These are those that to say one thing but do another. They say one thing but they do another. Avoid such people. Keep far away from them. Wow. For among them are those who worm their way into homes and they captivate morally weak and spiritually dwarfed women, weigh them down and the burden of the, with the burden of their sins, swayed by various impulses, always learning and listening to anybody who will teach them. I want to say this right now, and please hear me. Some of us have too many teachers. You got used to changing classes in high school and college, and you still do it in the body of Christ. How many churches do you need to go to before God plants your butt in a seat? How many teachers do you need before you follow the right path? You can't take a piece from here and here and here. We found out just this past week that there is a major teacher. He loves to teach. He likes to also teach against the things of the Spirit. Sorry. And he came out discouraging people to stand up in this nation because it's unspiritual. I'm sorry, that's the spirit of religion. It's a spirit of religion. I mean, you have to be taught to be that dumb. You're not that dumb naturally. Just letting you know. Good news is. Hallelujah. Don't turn off the TV yet. Just listen. I know there are good books and good teachers and good things that God wants to pour in your life. And He might use several people to do it. But when it comes to your baseline... To the truth and the and the world vision and the way you see things, the world view, you need to stick with just a few fathers, just a few mothers of the faith. Okay, don't don't just grab this and study this and study this and study this and study. Pretty soon you're going to be so confused you will have all kinds of knowledge, but you'll have no power. There is only one thing you need to study, and that is the face of Jesus Christ. If you'll study His face and stay in His arms and walk in with Him hand by hand, He will teach you right from wrong, and you might never ever pick up a video or a CD or a book, but He is. Amen. Are you with me? Amen. We've become book clubs and connoisseurs of the latest teaching, looking for something when the power is still in the cross Amen. and the empty tomb. We need to be 
more wise. Always learning and listening to anybody who will teach them, but never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. What does that mean? I've taught, I've, I know every book on healing, but I've never been healed. I've heard everything about revival, but I've never been in revival. I've read every book there is, and I've seen everything that there is to see. And I've, I've, I, you know what? I've got her whole library, but I have no peace in my life. Am I describing anything? Anybody know what I'm talking about? Just as Janus and Jambres, the court ma magicians of Egypt, opposed Moses, so these men also opposed the truth. Men of depraved mind, unqualified, and worthless as teachers. Man, how could he say such things, Jack? How, how could he be so confrontational? Didn't he know that God wants us to live in peace with all men? Doesn't he know that we shouldn't be like that? No, no, he's warning. Amen. There are times when the alarm clock has to go off. Some of us, you can wake up to the smell of bacon. Others need a foghorn to roll out of bed. Let me finish this up. But they will not get very far, verse 9, for their meaningless nonsense and ignorance will become obvious to everyone, as was that of Janus and Jambres. You guys remember the magicians in Pharaoh's court? I'm going to finish with this. What did the staff, the rod, the power of God do? Moses threw it down and it became a what? A snake. Right? And they said, well, all right, well, that's some power. We've got that kind of power. Come on, this is what the devil does. And he challenges it with twice the power, twice the power, two snakes. They both throw down a staff. Both those staffs become snakes. What does God do? He eats their snakes. Folks, we need to know we're in the time where we're going to have to deal with some snakes. And we can either watch the devil double down and defeat us, or we can swallow what he's doing in one who has all power and all authority. Amen. Amen. It is time. It is time. It is time to put on the whole armor of God. It is not a sweet little prayer or something that we use to teach in Sunday school with felt. It is, it is a reality in the spirit to be clothed with the full armor of God, putting on the breastplate of righteousness. And the Bible even says there's the breastplate of righteousness, faith, and love. The shield of faith, the sword of the spirit, a helmet of salvation. Those that know their God, know their God, shall do mighty exploits in the middle of what? A very dark season and time. Our loins girt about with a belt of truth and our feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. It is not peace toward men. It is peace with God. And if you don't align with God, I'm not against you. I'm for you to try to bring you into alignment with God. But the thing in you might drive you away from me if I don't come with enough power to confront you and confront it and cause it to cry out. And everyone in the whole place will know. Folks, I'm telling you, we're about to see spirits that have been laying dormant in the body of Christ rear their heads. My wife and I, we saw it repeatedly this week. Repeatedly this week. Come on. Christians that have demonic oppression and possession in their life. Ministers. <laughs> I, the prophetess, have spoken. That's a quote. Ministers that don't know that they're operating under the wrong spirit. I tell you a thing. I prophesy this in Jesus' name. There will be prominent mega church pastors that will repent for their stance against the Holy Spirit in this day and hour. 
I don't know what it will take, but I'm telling you, there's about to be power released from the mouth of the lion. And you cannot shut his mouth. Because when he roars, the universe pays attention. Whew. I think that's what God had to say today. Amen. Amen. I hope you get something from that. I want to be on the side of power and authority, Jack. I want to walk in the Spirit. I want the devil to have no place in me. If there's something in me, I want it out. We did a series. My daughter and I, we put it together. And literally, most of it, it's not real deep. It's just simply helping people get free from things that they don't know they have. Or they know they have, but they don't want to talk about it in their Sunday best. Church is filled with addiction, anger, bitterness, racism. I'm not talking about their racism. Their racism is anything that's opposite of what they want it to be. I'm talking about people that hate other people because of their color. And you can be any color and hate any other color. You can be the same color. Division is division. There are still idol worship in the church. I'm telling you, and God does it every election. He's like, all right, we're going to push in. We're going to pray. We're going to move. You're going to, we got to, I need you. I need you. And then all of a sudden, a couple of weeks before the election, he pulls me back and says, now I got this. I need you over here. Why? Because it's not by might nor by power. And it's not even by vote. I can't vote Jesus into your heart. Listen to me. I am telling you, go vote. And I'm telling you, if you want to know who to vote for, I'll even tell you that. I'll prove it with Scripture. Not with nightly news. I'll prove it with policy. And action. Truth. But a president doesn't save us. A, a, a pastor doesn't bring us deliverance. It is the Spirit of the Lord. It is a nation under God that will remain individual, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And in the body of Christ, Jesus is calling us to power and authority. How do we get there? We're going to pray. And we're going to ask Him to teach us. Do you know the Holy Spirit's job is to lead us into power and authority? He desires to drive. It's not hard. He is not a co-pilot. He is the captain of the Lord's hosts. Can we stand and close in prayer this morning? We didn't take up our tithe and offering. If you have your tithe or offering, to, offering today, you can give it as you go. We're praying for you and your blessing, but I'm believing God. How can It doesn't matter if you have everything you need and have nothing inside. If you're watching us today and you've never given your heart and your, to the Lord Jesus Christ, I want you to pray this prayer with me as we pray it here in this place. I want you to say this with me, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus I, acknowledge I acknowledge my sin, my, sin. my need, my need. For forgiveness. for forgiveness. I ask you, I ask you to, forgive to forgive me of all my sins, all my sins. To, cleanse me to cleanse me and set me free, set me free. By, your blood, by your blood through your cross, through your cross. For, me. for me. I believe, I believe that, God the Father that God the Father raised you from the dead, from the dead. and I ask you, and I ask you to, make me born again. to make me born again. Open my eyes, open my, eyes. Open my ears, if I have any hurts, I have any, hurts any, wounds, any wounds, any demonic, any demonic stronghold in my life, in my life I, renounce I renounce it. I resist it. I resist it and, I it and I give it to you. In Jesus' name, in Jesus name go, from me. go from me. I will not, I will not serve, a serve a lie. I will not, I will not be, deceived. be deceived. Because Jesus, because Jesus you, are the truth. you are the truth. You are my way. 
and my life forevermore. In Jesus' name. Now, if you prayed that prayer with us, I want to know something. You need to email us, comment, uh, to give us some sort of indication. You need to call somebody. I don't care if it's grandma, grandpa. Somebody needs to know today because somebody was praying for you to pray the prayer you just prayed with us. And I want you to tell somebody today what Jesus is doing in your life. I want to encourage you today. God is about to pour out His Spirit upon all flesh again. And we're going to see a removing of the enemy's uh, plans in the hearts and lives of the people and a restoration of the will of God in His body. Father, we thank You today in Jesus' name as we've gathered in this place that we have prayed one for another. We've prayed for all of these things to come to pass according to Your will. But now we pray for our enemies. We pray for those that have opposed themselves. We pray for the politicians that have been unjust and unrighteous. We pray for those that have led in the body of Christ, including ourselves, with sin in the camp. We pray, Father, in Jesus' name for those that have hurt us and we forgive them. We pray for those that have hurt us against a, a, a race of people or the babies, the children. We pray for those in pa uh, Planned Parenthood. We pray for those that have had abortions. We pray for the doctors and the nurses. We pray for the companies and those that harvest. Oh God, oh God, let the fear of God fall upon them. But Father, in the name of Jesus, we are asking you, we are asking you, we are asking you, we beseech you to rule and reign in our hearts and in the heart of our family, in the heart of our fellowships, in the heart of your body, and in the heart of this nation. We honor you and we praise you, Father. This is the day we ask you to restore power and authority in our hearts and in the name of Jesus. For your namesake, Jesus, do what it takes that we would walk in freedom. That we would walk in power. And we would walk in authority. In Jesus' name.